When Thomas came back, Annie and Clarabel told him how well Duck had managed. Thomas was so pleased to be home that he soon forgot to be jealous. The works had left Thomas's handbrake very stiff. It made his brake seem as if they were hard on, when in fact they were not. As a result, he and his coaches often overran the platform. Thomas found this most embarrassing. Gradually, his driver and fireman learned to be extra careful. But one day, Thomas's fireman was ill, and a relief man took his place. The fireman had fastened the coupling and joined the driver and station master on the platform to wait for Henry's passengers. The fireman had forgotten all about Thomas's handbrake. Thomas simmered happily. Not long now, he thought, as he saw Henry slowly approaching. But Thomas's brakes were not hard on, and suddenly he felt his wheels begin to move. He tried to stop, but he couldn't without his driver and fireman. He tried to whistle a warning, but he couldn't do that either. The guard, driver, fireman and passengers were all stranded on the platform. Stop! Stop! shrieked Danny and Clarabel. But Thomas, with plenty of steam, kept on going. The alarm went out down the line. Stop the runaway! There, ready for action, was Harold the helicopter. The inspector had made a plan and together they took off into the sky. At last, Thomas was tiring. I need to stop, I need to stop, he panted wearily. As they neared the next station, Thomas saw Harold land. They entered the platform slowly enough for the inspector to act. Judging his moment, the inspector scrambled into the cab and screwed the brake hard on. At last, Thomas stopped. Both he and the inspector were very relieved. Then they thanked Harold. Thomas was looking at a board on the quay. Danger! We mustn't go past it, he said. That's orders. Why? Danger means falling down something, said Thomas. I went past danger once and fell down a mine. I can't see a mine, said Percy. He didn't know that the foundations of the quay had sunk. The rails now sloped downward to the sea. Stupid board, said Percy. Percy made a plan. One day he whispered to the trucks, will you give me a bump when we get to the quay? The trucks had never been asked to bump an engine before. They giggled and chatted about it. Driver doesn't know my plan, chuckled Percy. On, 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 laughed the trucks. Percy thought they were helping. I'll pretend to stop at the station, but the trucks will push me past the board. Then I'll make them stop. I can do that whenever I like. Every wise engine knows that you cannot trust trucks. Go on, go on, they yelled, and bumped Percy's driver and fireman off the footplate. Oh, said Percy, sliding past the board. Percy was frantic. That's enough. Percy was sunk. You are a very disobedient engine. Percy knew that voice. Please, sir, get me out, sir. I'm truly sorry, sir. No, Percy, we cannot do that till high tide. I hope it will teach you to obey orders. Yes, sir. 
It was dark when they brought floating cranes to rescue Percy. He was too cold and stiff to move by himself. Next day, he was sent to the works on Henry's goods train. Well, 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 chuckled Henry. Did you like the water? No, I am surprised. You need more determination, Percy. Water's nothing to an engine with determination, you know. Perhaps you will like it better next time. Percy is quite determined that there won't be a next time. The silly engines were flattered. He has very good manners, they murmured. We are pleased to have him in our yard. Duck had his doubts. Come on, he said. Diesel purred after him. You're worthy, fat. Sir Topham hat to you, ordered Duck. Diesel looked hurt. Your worthy Sir Topham hat thinks I need to learn. He is mistaken. We diesels don't need to learn. We know everything. We come to a yard and improve it. We are revolutionary. Oh, said Duck, if you're Revo Thinger Gummy, perhaps you would collect my trucks while I fetch Gordon's coaches. Diesel delighted to show off, purred away. When Duck returned, Diesel was trying to take some trucks from a siding. They were old and empty. They had not been touched for a long time. Diesel found them hard to move. Pull, push, backwards, forwards. Oh, oh. The trucks groaned. We can't, we won't. Duck watched with interest. Diesel lost patience. He roared, gave a great heave. Trucks get forward. Oh, oh! They scream. We can't, we won't. Some of their brakes snapped, and the gear jammed in the sleepers. Arrgh, arrgh. <laughs> Chuckled Duck. Diesel recovered and tried to push the trucks back, but they wouldn't move. Duck ran quietly round to collect the other trucks. Thank you for arranging these, Diesel. I must go now. Don't you want this lot? No, thank you. Diesel gulped. And I've taken all this trouble. Why didn't you tell me? You never asked me. Besides, said Duck, you were having such fun being Rev whatever it was you said. Goodbye. <laughs> Diesel had to help the workmen clear the mess. He hated it. All the trucks were laughing and singing at him. Trucks are waiting in the yard, packing them with diesel. Show the world what I can do, gaily boast the diesel. In and out he creeps about like a big black weasel. When he pulls the wrong trucks out, up goes the diesel. Arrgh! Growled diesel and scuttled away to sulk in the shed. He was going to tell lies about Duck. Next day, he spoke to the trucks. I see you like jokes. You made a good joke about me yesterday. I laughed and laughed. Duck told me one about Gordon. I'll whisper it. Don't tell Gordon I told you. And he sniggered away. Oh, ho, ho, guffered the trucks. Gordon will be cross with Duck when he knows. Let's tell him and pay Duck out for bumping us. They laughed rudely at the engines as they went by. Soon Gordon, Henry and James found out why. Disgraceful, said Gordon. Disgusting, said James. Despicable, said Henry. We cannot allow it. They consulted together. Yes, they said. He did it to us. We'll do it to him and see how he likes it. Duck was tired out. The 
trucks have been cheeky and troublesome. He wanted a rest in the shed. Three engines barred his way. Hoosh! Keep out! Stop fooling, said Doc. I'm tired. So are we, hissed the engines. We are tired of you. We like diesel. We don't like you. You tell tales about us to the trucks. I don't. You do. I don't. You do. The fat controller came to stop the noise. Duck call me a galloping sausage, spluttered Gordon. Rusty red scrap iron, hissed James. I'm old square wheels, fumed Henry. Well, Duck, Duck considered. I only wish, sir, he said gravely, that I'd thought of those names myself, if the dome fits. Oh, <coughs> he made trucks laugh at us, accused the engines. The fat controller recovered. He'd been trying not to laugh himself. Did you, Duck? Certainly not, sir. No steam engine would be as mean as that. Diesel lurked up. Now, Diesel, you heard what Duck said. I can't understand it, sir, to think that Duck of all engines. I am dreadfully grieved, sir, but know nothing. I see, said the fat controller. Diesel squirmed and hoped he didn't. I'm sorry, Duck, but you must go to Edward's station for a while. I know he will be glad to see you. As you wish, sir. Duck trundled sadly away, while Diesel smirked with triumph. Duck loved coasting down the hill, running easily with the wind whistling past. Suddenly, it was a guard's warning whistle. Hurrah, 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 laughed the trucks. We've broken away, we've broken away. Chase him, bump him, throw him off the rails, they yelled. Hurry, Duck, hurry, said the driver. They raced through Edward's station, but the trucks were catching up as fast as we can. Then they'll catch us gradually. The driver was gaining control. Another clear mile and we'll do it. Oh, glory, look at that. James was just pulling out on their line from the station ahead. Any minute there could be a crash. It's up to you now, Duck, cried the driver. Duck put every ounce of weight and steam against the trucks. It's too late, Duck groaned and shut his eyes. He veered into a siding where a barber had set up shop. He was shaving a customer. The silly trucks had knocked their guard off his van and left him far behind after he had whistled a warning. But the trucks didn't care. They were feeling very pleased with themselves. <laughs> Beg pardon, sir, gasped Duck. Excuse my intrusion. No, I won't, said the barber. You frightened my customers. I'll teach you and he lathered Duck's face all over. Poor Duck. Thomas was helping to pull the trucks away when the fat controller arrived. <laughs> I do not like engines popping through my walls, fumed the barber. I appreciate your feelings, said the fat controller, but you must know that this engine and his crew have prevented a serious accident. It was a very close um, shave Oh, said the barber. Oh, excuse me. He filled a basin of water to wash Duck's face. I'm sorry. I didn't know you were being a brave engine. That's all right, sir. I didn't know that either. You were very brave indeed, said the fat controller. I'm proud of you. The fat controller watched the rescue operation. Then he had more news for Duck. 
And when you are properly washed and mended, you are coming home. Home, sir? Do you mean the yard? Of course. But, sir, they don't like me. They like Diesel. Not now. I never believed Diesel, so I sent him packing. The engines are sorry and want you back. Thomas grew crosser and crosser. Time's time, he grumbled. Why should I keep my passengers waiting while Henry and James dawdle about all day on viaducts? Don't blame me, snorted Henry. If we hurried across the viaduct, it might collapse. And then you'd have no passengers at all. What would you do then? Run my train on time for one thing, retorted Thomas. He hurried away before Henry could answer. Bertie was impatient too. He was timed to arrive just after Thomas. His passengers found that instead of going straight from the bus to their train, they were kept waiting till Thomas arrived. Soon Bertie grew cross with Thomas. Late again, he remarked, as Thomas panted wearily in. We may be friends, but I thought you could go fast, Thomas. It's time we had another race. I reckon I could beat you now. Thomas let off steam loudly. Rubbish! He hissed fiercely. It's those main line engines. They dither about on their viaduct and then blame the fat controller's workmen. It's just an excuse for laziness, if you ask me. One day, James was later than ever at the junction. I'm sorry, Thomas, he puffed. I was held up at the station and the viaduct made it worse. It's lucky for you I'm a guaranteed connection, grumbled Thomas. Before James could answer, he puffed importantly away. Come along, come along, he panted to the coaches. Annie and Claribel did their best, but Thomas soon found that he couldn't save much time. Suddenly, Thomas saw Bertie ahead. His radiator was steaming. What's the matter? asked Thomas. You should be at the station by now. You're late. I feel dreadful, moaned Bertie, all upset inside, and driver says he can't make me better. Thank goodness you're late too. Can you take my passengers, please? They'll never get home otherwise. Of course, agreed Thomas. He now felt sorry for Bertie and promised to get help at the next station. Thomas set off again. Already he felt much more cheerful, and Bertie's passengers, travelling in Annie and Clarabel, all reached home safely. Until one day, Donald had an accident. The rails were slippery. He couldn't stop in time. The fat controller was most annoyed. I am disappointed, Donald. I did not expect such, um, clumsiness from you. I had decided to send Douglas back and keep you. I'm sorry, sir, said Donald. I should think so, too. You have upset my arrangements. Now James will have to help with the goods work, while you have your tender mended. James won't like that. The fat controller was right. James grumbled dreadfully. Anyone would think, said Douglas, that Donald had his accident on purpose. I heard tell about an engine and some tar wagons. Shut up, said James. It's not funny. He didn't like to be reminded of his own accident. Well, 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 said Douglas. Surely, James, it wasn't a you. You didn't say. James didn't say. 
He slouched sulkily away. He's cross, sniggered the spiteful great van. We'll try to make him crosser still. Hold back, giggled the trucks to each other. James did his best, but he was exhausted when they reached Edward's station. Luckily, Douglas was there. Help me up the hill, please, panted James. These trucks are playing tricks. We'll show them, said Douglas. Slowly but surely, the snorting engines forced the trucks up the hill. But James was losing steam. I can't do it! I can't do it! Lay it to me! shouted Douglas. The guard was anxious. Go steady! The van's breaking! The van was in pieces. No one had been hurt, and soon Edward came to clear the mess. The fat controller was on board. I might have known it would be Douglas, he said. Douglas was grand, sir, said Edward. James had no steam left, but Douglas worked hard enough for three. I heard him from my yard. Two would have been enough, said the fat controller. Presently, they came to a drift which was larger than most. They charged it and were just backing for another try when... Lush sakes, Donald! It's Henry! Do not fetch yourself, Henry! Wait a while. We'll have you out. Henry was very grateful. He saw all was not well. The twins were glum. They told him that the fat controller was returning soon. He'll send us back for sure. It's a shame, said Percy. A lot of nonsense about a broken signal box, grumbled Gordon. That spiteful brake van too, put in James. Good riddance, that's what I say. They were splendid in the snow, added Henry. It isn't fair. They all agreed that something must be done, but none knew what. Percy decided to talk to Edward about it. What you need, said Edward, is a deputation. He explained what that was. Percy ran back quickly. Edward says we need a, a depastation. Of course, said Gordon. The question is, what is a desperation, asked Henry. It's when engines tell the fat controller something's wrong, said Percy. Did you say tell the fat controller, asked Duck thoughtfully. There was a long silence. I propose, said Gordon, that Percy be our, um, disputation. Hi, squeaked Percy. I can't. Rubbish, Percy, said Henry. It's easy. That's settled then, said Gordon. Poor Percy wished it wasn't. Hello, Percy. It's nice to be back. Percy jumped. Uh, ye yes, yes, sir. Please, sir. You look nervous, Percy. What's the matter? Please, sir, they've made me a desperation, sir, to speak to you, sir. I don't like it, sir. The fat controller pondered. Do you mean a deputation, Percy? Yes, sir, please, sir. It's Donald and Douglas, sir. They say, sir, that if you send them away, sir, they'll be turned into scraps, sir. That would be dreadful, sir. Please, sir, don't send them away. Thank you, Percy. That will do. Later, the fat controller spoke to the engines. I had a deputation. I understand your feelings, but I do not approve of interference. He paused impressively. Donald and Douglas, I hear that your work in the snow was good. Percy and Toby were still asleep. Thomas suddenly remembered. Silly stick in the muds, he chuckled. I'll show them. Driver said I could manage without him. I'll just go out. Then I'll stop and weesh. That'll make them jump. Thomas thought he was being clever. Really, he was only moving because a careless cleaner had meddled with his control. He soon found his mistake. He tried to weesh, but he couldn't. He tried to stop, but he couldn't. 
he just kept rolling along. He didn't dare look at what was coming next. There was the station master's house. The station master was about to have breakfast. Horrors! cried Thomas and shut his eyes. The house rocked. Broken glass tinkled. Plaster was everywhere. Thomas had collected a bush on his travels. He peered into the room through its leaves. He couldn't speak. The station master was furious. His wife picked up her plate. You miserable engine, she scolded. Just look what you've done to our breakfast. Now I shall have to cook some more. She banged the door. More plaster fell. This time, it fell on Thomas. Thomas felt depressed. Workmen propped up the house with strong poles and laid rails through the garden. Meanwhile, Donald and Douglas arrived. Don't bash yourself, Thomas. We'll soon have you back on the rails, they laughed. Donald and Douglas, puffing hard, managed to haul Thomas back to safety. Bits of fencing, the bush, and a broken window frame festooned his front, which was badly twisted. The twins laughed and left him. Thomas was in disgrace. There was worse to come. You are a very naughty engine. I know, sir. I'm sorry, sir. Thomas's voice was muffled behind his bush. You must go to the works and have your front mended. It will be a long job. Yes, sir. Meanwhile, a diesel rail car will do your work. A d d diesel, sir? Thomas spluttered. Yes, Thomas. Diesels always stay in their sheds till they are wanted. Daisy was hard to please. She shuddered at the engine shed. This is dreadfully smelly. I'm highly sprung, and anything smelly is bad for my swerves. Next, they tried the carriage shed. This is better said Daisy, but whatever is that rubbish? The rubbish turned out to be Annie, Clarabel and Henrietta, who were most offended. We won't stay here to be insulted, they fumed. Percy and Toby had to take them away and spend half the night soothing their hurt feelings. The engines woke next morning feeling exhausted. Daisy, on the other hand, felt bright and cheerful. Ooh, ooh, she tooted as she came out of the yard and back to the station. Look at me, she purred to the passengers. I am the latest diesel, highly sprung and right up to date. You won't want Thomas's bumpy old Annie and Clarabel now. The passengers waited for Daisy to start, but she didn't. She saw that a milk fan was about to be coupled to her and was most indignant. Do they expect me to pull that? Surely, said her driver, you can pull one van. I won't, said Daisy. Percy can do it. He loves messing about with trucks. She began to shudder violently. Nonsense, said her driver. Come on now, back down. Daisy lurched backwards. She was so cross that she blew a fuse. Told you, she said, and stopped. Everyone argued with her, but it was no use. It's fit as orders, she said. What is? My fitter's a very nice man. 
He comes every week and examines me carefully. Daisy, he says, never, never pull. You're highly sprung and pulling is bad for your swerves. So that's how it is, finished Daisy. One day, Toby brought Henrietta to the station, where Percy was grumpily shunting. Hello, Percy. I see Daisy's left the milk again. I'll have to make a special journey with it, I suppose. Anyone would think I'd nothing to do, grumbled Percy. Tell you what, replied Toby. I'll take the milk. You fetch my trucks. The drivers and the station master agreed. Percy had never been to the quarry before. He began ordering the trucks about. Hurry along, he said. The trucks grumbled to each other. This is Toby's place. Percy's got no right to poke his funnel up here and push us around. They whispered and passed the word. Pay Percy out. Pay Percy out. Come along, puffed Percy. No nonsense. We'll give him nonsense, giggled the trucks. But they followed so quietly that Percy thought they were under control. Suddenly, they saw a notice ahead. All trains stop to pin down brakes. Peep, peep, peep! Brakes, guard, please. But before he could check them, the trucks surged forward. On, on, they cried. Help, help, whistled Percy. The man on duty at the crossing rushed to warn traffic with his red flag, but was too late to switch Percy to the runaway siding. Frantically trying to grip the rails, Percy slid into the yard. Peep, peep, look out. The brake van was in smithereens. Percy's driver and fireman had jumped clear, but Percy was stranded. Next day, the fat controller arrived. Toby and Daisy had helped to clear the wreckage, but Percy remained on his perch of trucks. We must now try, said the fat controller, to run the branch line with Toby and a diesel. You have put us in an awkward predicament. I am sorry, sir, replied Percy. You can stay there till we are ready. Perhaps it will teach you to be careful with trucks. Percy sighed. The trucks groaned beneath his wheels. He quite understood about awkward predicaments. Bill and Ben are tank engine twins. Each has four wheels, a tiny chimney and dome, and a small squat cab. Their trucks are filled with china clay. It is needed for pottery, paper, paint, and many other things. The twins are now kept busy pulling the trucks for engines on the main line and for ships in the harbor. One morning, they arranged some trucks and went away for more. They returned to find them all gone. The twins were most surprised. Their drivers examined a patch of oil. That's a diesel, they said. It's a wattle, asked Bill. A diesel, I think, replied Ben. There's a notice about them in our shed. Coughs and sneezels spread diseasels. You had a cough in your smoke box yesterday. It's your fault the diseasel came. It isn't, it is. Stop arguing, you two, laughed their drivers. Let's go and rescue our trucks. Bill and Ben were horrified. But the diseasel will magic us away like the trucks. He won't magic us, replied their drivers. We'll more likely magic him. Listen, he doesn't know your twins. So we'll take away your names and numbers, and then this is what we'll do. Puffing hard, the twins set off on their journey to find the diesel.
They were looking forward to playing tricks on him. Creeping into the yard, they found the diesel on a siding with the missing trucks. Ben hid behind, but Bill went boldly alongside. Diesel looked up. Do you mind? Yes, said Bill, I do. I want my trucks, please. These are mine, said the Diesel. Go away. Bill pretended to be frightened. You're a big bully, he whimpered. You'll be sorry. He ran back and hid behind the trucks on the other side. Ben now came forward. Truck stealer, hissed Ben. He ran away too. Bill took his place. Lights running at night, the rails hummed and the signal light shone green. But a broken cartload of lime lay ahead. Sam the farmer had just gone for help. Percy broke the cart to smithereens. Lime flew everywhere. He puffed quickly to the nearest signal box. Percy's driver explained what had happened. I'll see to it, said the signalman, but you'd better clean Percy or people will think he's a ghost. Percy chuckled. Do let's pretend I'm a ghost and scare Thomas. That'll teach him to say I'm a silly little engine. Toby promised to help. <laughs> Thomas was being oiled up for his evening train. Percy's had an accident, cried Toby. Poor engine, said Thomas. Botheration! That means I'll be late. They've cleared the line for you, but there's something worse. Out with it, Toby. I can't wait all evening. I've just seen something, said Toby. It looked like Percy's ghost. It said it was, was coming here to, to, to warn us. Huh! Who cares? Don't be frightened, Toby. I'll take care of you. Pee, pee, pip, 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 pee. Let me in, let me in, wailed Percy. No, no, not by the smoke of my chimney, chim, chim. I'll chuff and I'll puff. And I'll break your door in. Oh, dear, exclaimed Thomas. It's getting late. Oh, I'd no idea. Oh, I must find Annie and Clarabel. It was morning when Thomas returned. Where have you been? asked Toby. Ah, well, said Thomas. I knew you'd be sad about Percy, and I, uh, I didn't like to intrude. I slept in the good shed and... Oh, sorry, can't stop. Got to see a coach about a train. Whee! Percy gave a ghostly whistle. Don't be frightened, Thomas, he laughed. It's only me. Your ugly fizz is enough to frighten anyone, said Thomas. You're like ugly indeed. I'm... A green caterpillar with red stripes, continued Thomas firmly. You crawl like one too. I don't. Who's been late every afternoon this week? It's the hay. I can't help that, said Thomas. Time's time, and the fat controller relies on me to keep it. I can't if you crawl in the hay till all hours. Green caterpillar indeed, fumed Percy. He set off to collect some hay to take to the harbor. Everyone says I'm handsome, or at least nearly everyone. Anyway, my curves are better than Thomas's corners. Thomas says I'm always late, he grumbled. I'm never late, or at least only a few minutes. What's that to Thomas? He can always catch up time further on. 
All the same, he and his driver decided to start home early. Then came trouble. A crate of treacle was upset all over Percy. Percy was cross. He was still sticky when he puffed away. The wind was blowing fiercely. Look at that, exclaimed the driver. The wind caught the piled hay, tossing it up and over the track. The lion climbed here. Take a run at it, Percy, his driver advised. Percy gathered speed, but the hay made the rails slippery and his wheels wouldn't grip. Time after time he stalled with spinning wheels and had to wait till the line ahead was cleared before he could start again. Everyone was waiting. Thomas seethed impatiently. Ten minutes late, I warned him, passengers will complain and the fat controller. Then they all saw Percy. They laughed and shouted. Sorry I'm late, Percy panted. Look what's crawled out of the hay, teased Thomas. What's wrong, asked Percy. Talk about hairy caterpillars, puffed Thomas. It's worth being late to have seen you. <laughs> <laughs>